here. Um, so Kitty, tell us a little bit about uh, the landing and what folks can expect. Thanks, Steve. And thanks again for letting us sponsor these great uh, Zoom uh, events that you're having. They're so great. Um, the landing is opening in Alexandria, right outside of Old Town in uh, hopefully February. And we will be offering independent living, assisted living and memory care. And we, like Steve said, we have two great properties, uh, one in Fairfax. So Amanda's over there at the Providence and they offer assisted living and memory care. And then we have Julie at the Seneca um, in Rockville. So if you haven't visited, you need to come see us. Um, I don't have a lot to show yet, but I will this fall. So we're really excited. And she's got a, I was over there a couple of weeks ago at the sales office. So great little place where you can sit down and kind of see the different facades and things like that. So think about that for your clients and um, uh, loved ones and what have you. So uh, Kitty, hang on the screen with us a little bit here before we bring on Nick. I want to uh, um, bring on a special guest today which is Marie, and um, Marie's got a really interesting project that I, I, I really wanted to take the opportunity to let our audience know about. Marie's a college student, and along with another team, a team of other college students, they were, uh, um, they were awarded a, um, I guess they, they entered the Smart City Challenge and they won an award and actually have a contract with the city coming up to develop an app that'll help older adults. So um, Marie, tell us a little bit about this, this project and how can we activate our audience to help you out at this point? Yeah, sure, Steve, thanks so much for inviting me to do this. This is super great to be here. Um, yeah, so the competition we did was the Smart City Challenge and the question was to pitch an idea that would help improve cities and make cities smarter. Um, with technology and our solution was that we should make cities wiser, meaning we should make cities better for older adults, better for seniors, especially since the age pyramid is changing and the number of seniors is growing. So um, uh, this contract that we have with the city of Fairfax, our first project is making an iPhone app, um, the goal of which is to um, avoid social isolation among seniors and to um, connect them with each other with a really, really easy to use application. So um, that is almost out, but before we release it uh, publicly, we are really looking for input on like how we can make it better, how we can um, make it more accessible. Uh, and we're looking for beta testers. So people who could try it out and let us know um, their feedback. Uh, so Steve has kindly sent the link to that in the chat. Um, and as well, if this is something you want to share with your communities or give us input on how we can do outreach better, for example, right? not just feedback on the app itself, that would be amazing. Great. Yeah, Marie, um, I, I dropped the link in there. Feel free to drop it in again with your email and your contact. And hopefully so folks will reach out to you. I, um, I think this is really exciting and it's great to see the younger generation out there thinking about technology and how it can improve um, all of our lives. Are there any restrictions on like the beta testers? It doesn't, is there like, are you looking specifically for people over a certain age or, or people um, that meet a certain classification? So we're looking for people who would be in our target audience. So people who are seniors, um, maybe around 55 plus, 60 plus. Um, we don't want to restrict it too much. Um, and particularly people who maybe have trouble with existing applications, technologies that have ads all over the place. And, um, and to answer the question, this app is going to be available for uh, the whole U.S. So we're just developing it to start with in the city of Fairfax, but it's going to be available for everyone. Yeah, good. It's it, it, See, folks, because uh, the younger generation tends to be a little bit better at multitasking. She was able to respond to that comment <laughs> that Allison said. But yeah, so for the test, no, no matter where you are, please give Marie and her team feedback. 
but ultimately your first contract is with the city of Fairfax, but hopefully this is something that, you know, others, it, it works and other cities could embrace it. And, you know, we could even have this in Alexandria uh, and part of the community right around the landing. Uh, so <laughs> that would be cool. So, yes. um, well, thanks um, Marie and Kitty for you and your colleagues sponsorship. And um, I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm really excited now to dive into the, um, oh, well, actually we're gonna, we're gonna meet Nick here shortly, but um, I tell you what, uh, uh, Marie, you've got two questions in the Q and A box there. Um, is this a beta test for the app or the device? So will the beta testers be all over the country? Not clear. So the, the beta okay. testers are all over the country. The, yeah, the beta testers can be anywhere. You just need to have an iPhone so that you can download the app. Um, and I will certainly provide the email address. And yeah, and Elizabeth said, so just drop that into chat so everybody. Yeah, can. of course. Okay, great. Well, thanks you too. And so uh, let's, uh, let me get back to my screen here. And I've got a couple of other housekeeping things before I bring on Nick. And uh, the first is just make sure you go to proaging.com. We got a bunch of really good programs coming up, um, coming up this month. And um, at the bottom of the page of, on proaging.com, in addition to seeing the recordings and the calendar and our career center and our provider search, you can see all the current issues of Positive Aging Sourcebook. And for those of you in the DC metro area, we just came out with a brand new one for DC metro. Um, so you can view the digital edition while the, uh, the print edition is on its way to you in the mail. So with that, uh, today we're going to be talking about the Assistance Now wearable, and we've got now on the screen the founder and CEO, Nick Paisant. Did I correctly pronounce it? Paisant, that was close, Steve. Okay, good, good. <laughs> good try. I'm really good at botching last names on, on this. Um, but uh, Nick, really charged up uh, since I learned about your device to dive in deeper with it and to share it with our audience. Uh, but before we jump into uh, learning more about this product and how you developed it and what it does, um, let's get to know you a little bit better. Tell us a little bit about your background and what led you to your current role. Sure. So, uh, by the way, good morning, Steve. So I was, uh, I owned a technology company, which I sold uh, about 15 years ago. Now it was uh, in the middle of the uh, Great Recession, so I didn't do that well on it. But uh, I, 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 at that same time, I was kind of going through a family issue. Um, somebody in the family was in need of care. And like most kind of entrepreneurial situations, I thought, hmm, I think I can do this better. Uh, it just seemed disjointed and not personal, and there wasn't a lot of education. And the care it was kind of a one size fits all, right? You just had a caregiver show up that was used to caring for just about anybody and there wasn't this, this kind of focus. So I put together a business plan, started this company about 15 years ago um, to, to provide focused care. Um, that means just a, a specialization, if you will, for the type of, of, uh, of, of person that was needing that care. And they come from all, as you know, all different walks of life. You can have broken hips, injuries, post-surgery, there were just so many different reasons people needed care. Now, what's the, what's the name of that company? Uh, the Sorna Home Care. That's the parent company of, of Assistance Now. Okay. And, and you're based in, you're, you're based on the West Coast in California? Yep, we're, we're in the Western United States. Okay. Is Discerna a local company or is it it is, yeah, it's a, it's a Western United States company, Okay. Um, which is where I've been for the last almost 15 years okay, before great. I started Assistance Now. Um, okay, great. So, so you created this, uh, you've got this, this home care company based on your personal experience. How did this morph into the um, Assistance Now device and... Uh, and then tell us a little bit about that that product and what it's sure. All about. So great question, Steve. That that's the that's the 
where the rubber meets the road really is, is why do people need these, these technologies? And there's a few reasons. One is um, people uh, 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 that aren't quite ready to have care, right? They're not ready for assisted living or they're not ready for a caregiver, but they do, they're no longer safe at home by themselves. Um, for so long, really all they've had is, is a dependent, the I fall and I can't get up um, pendant, right? Mm -hmm. And we were running into so many of our clients that just didn't want that type of device. They, they felt that it made them feel older. They weren't going to push it anyway, or they didn't, it wasn't comfortable around their neck. And then the other uh, um, really, I guess, population that I started to notice is the people that were coming out of the hospital, they'd had a surgery or, or the, the social worker case manager said, hey, you, you probably need somebody or something to watch you because you could fall and that could be a problem. So to address this, this market, I really looked at what's available today and, and coming back, to, coming from technology, it was kind of a no brainer for me. Here we have all these, these great new smartwatches and phones and technology. Why can't we make something that goes on to a wrist or uh, something that, that somebody feels comfortable with? It's not saying, hey, look, I'm old. I have this device that, you know, I need to push a button, but it, it fits in with everybody else and it also uh, provides other functionality such as being a watch. Yeah, I, I, I think the stigma, we, one thing that we talk about a lot on these discussions is the stigma and issues of ageism and, and things of that nature and the stigma of, of the personal emergency response devices. In fact, like one of the things that, that has a huge stigma is just hearing aids, even though they're nearly invisible, it's the, um, the, the public tends to delay these products, even though they know that they can be helpful and beneficial. And, you know, the idea that there could be a watch that is functional for people, no matter what their age, but has, has, um, has functions that could help uh, a less independent older adult is, is amazing. Right. So, um, so uh, great. So uh, t tell us a little bit about this product. And uh, sure. I'm always curious about the journey of an entrepreneur and sort of like the trials and tribulations to sort of get to the, the product that you're currently offering. Yeah, that, see, that has been a journey. I'll tell you, we started out with uh, utilizing products that were currently on the market that were being made overseas. And we had battery issues. We had great products, but they're, uh, you know, maybe a little too big for a small wrist, or maybe the battery wasn't lasting long enough. What we finally really kind of settled on, um, both Samsung and Apple, as you know, have these smartwatches. They're very small. They have great, I mean, these are two behemoth companies. So who can beat them when it comes to battery technology and, and just the size of these devices and the lightness of these devices. So we decided, gosh, why not use an existing product and then overlap our technology on it? And they do, there is fall detection on these devices um, like the Apple and the Samsung, but we really layer on that extra uh, uh, technology. So who's going to get the call? What we realized, most of our clients did not want 911 call. They'd never want 911 called unless it's an absolute emergency. So we, we, when you have a call or, or there's an alert, it goes to somebody that, that you know. Um, so it might be one of us, a, a, a customer service rep that, that the wearer is familiar with and knows. It might be a family member. And then, you know, it's triaged or, or, or there's many, many times that isn't necessarily an emergency. It's just uh, either a false alarm or maybe it was a fall, but there was no uh, emergency. So that's a big part of it, just how that call comes in and how we deal with it. The other things are just has setting heart rate parameters. So we know if there's a high heart rate or a low heart rate that we can change on the fly. Family is aware of that because they get the alerts. Um, medication reminders. So you know, how many times do, do we worry about our parents taking their medications, right? And this, these reminders are very specific. They come up at specific times and you confirm that you took them and that's all logged and recorded. Um, so it's, it's things like that that I think uh, are kind of making the difference now that technology just wasn't available as little as five years ago. 
So what are, uh, kind of walk us through the features of the watch and how it arrives and, you know, sure. the, the various interfaces. Sure. You, you order the product online. Uh, it's $2.99. And, and what's, the, uh, what, what's the website? Uh, assistancenow.com. You had it up there for a minute uh, before, right before I think, I, about, about the same time I came on. Yep. I'm going to drop that into um, chat for everybody. Got it. Okay. Yep. Now, uh, so you order the product on assistancenow.com. Um, uh, you'll get a, 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 an order, a, a confirmation that, that's going to let you know within 48 hours, you're going to get uh, credentials to log in and create your account, right? So you go on and, and create your account on the web, and that's where you're going to put in mom. Uh, maybe uh, you have a brother that's also going to be a first responder. You put in all that information. Uh, when the watch arrives, it's right now because of the uh, Samsung's got, uh, uh, there's been some COVID issues and where a lot of these products are manufactured in Vietnam, there is a, a slight back order on these. Uh -oh. um, okay. But once the product arrives, literally you just turn it on and put it on your wrist and it, and it really runs behind the, the uh, uh, native uh, watch. So you'll see the time, you'll see all the things you would typically see with the Samsung uh, uh, watch. But if you want to get to the app, you would just swipe to the left and then you can see your, your medication reminders, your fall detection history, things like that. Um, the user, and you can, on the, the graphic that you showed, you can see the interface that the mobile app the, the here, children. let me pull that back up on the screen. Um, actually, here, let me, I'm going to actually bring your website on the screen because that might be a good way to kind of walk through some of the different things. Oh, that'd be great. Can you see that? Yep. Okay, great. Perfect. So you can see that that uh, mobile phone there, that's got the mobile app and that's basically a dashboard. It's going to tell you, you know, what, uh, a mom's heart rate medication reminders, where she's at. Um, and with memory um, location and kind of geofencing, we call it in the industry, but location is a big issue. Um, so we've got to, we can set a so many feet or so many yards away from home um, where an alert goes out to, to the family. Uh, but that is what you're seeing there is the mobile app and, and it basically it's a dashboard of information. Okay, great. And and here, this is great because we can kind of just walk through these these features. So you had mentioned there's fall detection. So um, uh, if if somebody fell and um, then their their contacts are automatically notified, it's not necessarily nine one one unless they requested. Correct. To, have yeah, so we, when, when they set up, we're going to say, okay, who's going to get the first call? Now, if you want professional monitoring, that's us. Okay. Um, so somebody would answer that knows you and uh, would speak to you and say, let's say it were you, let's say, hey, Steve, it looks like you've had a fall. Is this, was this really a fall? And then talk, to you, talk you through it. It's, it's probably going to be somebody you know, or you're going to select what's called family monitoring. So somebody in the family or friends will monitor. They will get the first call. Now, if, that, if they don't pick up, then it, it rolls to a second and then okay. to a third responder. Okay. And then have a choice between uh, professional monitoring and family monitoring. And then the phone here, like obviously the older adult could have access to the dashboard on their phone as well. But I'm assuming that primarily this phone dashboard is mainly for family members and um, uh, uh, caregivers. I could see, have you worked with um, like other home care agencies and I could see where this would be a valuable thing for all the clients of a particular home care provider to, to have one of these to, to um, provide that extra monitoring. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, this, when, as you go through the setup process, once you, when you, once you select your product and you go through the buying, you can select family monitoring or professional monitoring. And you also have an option where you can select, I want to, I want caregiver visits, right? Maybe it's once a week, once a month, whatever it is. And we work with uh, uh, any participating home care company throughout the country 
um, that, that wants to be part of this program, uh, we can send caregivers out and maybe, like I said, it's every day. Sometimes it's just, hey, mom needs a, a trip to the grocery store once a week. Um, so a caregiver will come once a week and you can select that as you're going through this buying process. And that's where, as you just mentioned, we partner with other home care companies. Great. And uh, medical and medication reminders. So um, I'm assuming that is like a calendar feature somewhat where um, mom takes three prescriptions in the morning, two in the afternoon and the watch buzzes or how does that work? Yep, so uh, when you set up the, your account in the web app, it's gonna ask you what medications is mom taken and how many times a day. It might be every day, three times a day. You can put in as many reminders. It may be to fit, remember that project that you were supposed to do, or remember to come visit your grandkids. So you put in those reminders. The reminder then pops up on the screen at that time, and then, then the user has to confirm it or dismiss the message, and it will log that that was confirmed just so that there's no missed medications. Great, and then um, SOS button, I scrolled down a little bit here and actually there's an, an image, I guess, this is um, access to the SOS button. And I guess different from fall detection, this would be like, let's say that I'm nervous or I've got chest pains, it's, I can just hit that SOS button. Is that the way that works? Yeah, so you can see on my watch here, I just did mine. And uh, if you feel any reason at all that you need help, you can just go ahead and hit SOS um, and that will get you your help. That will either go to us as the professional monitor or family or who friend or whoever is gonna be the first responder. But you, yes, that is, that is, I need help. It's not necessarily a fall, it, it could be anything, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm gonna uh, push that button. Now, remember Steve that Fall detection is, not, although technology has come a long way, uh, it's not 100% yet. Yes. We're seeing best case about 60% accuracy on falls. So we always say, remember your, your SOS button, because if you fall and you don't get an alert, then you're going to want to go straight to your SOS button and, and get some help. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, I... Um... I'm a cyclist, and one of my one of my friends, they uh, the the Garmin device also has a fall detection. They've got a uh, a child that does a lot of biking on his own, and they've set it up for that. And it's really interesting the alerts that they get on that. It's it's it it is accurate, but you know we haven't reached the point where we can. And and you wonder if if with detecting falls digitally, you know, can it ever be 100% accurate? There's always going to be a motion that you go through that might replicate a fall. But the fact that it's so accessible now is absolutely amazing. I remember the first generation of fall detection devices where you have these buzzers and alarms going off. This is yeah. so much better. Basically, um, you just have an, an, an XY, um, uh, 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 motion, right? And then you've got G-force. And all you can do is take that information and try and determine what constitutes a fall. And, and most of the time it's distance has been covered and then there's a stop, right? That G-force. So what we've done, we've added AI to uh, this technology and we're, what, what's going to happen is the fall detection is going to learn. It's going to learn your behaviors and then once it's got some, some data and it understands how you move, um, what your patterns are, then we're going to get more and more accurate. But you just can't do it without AI. There just isn't enough uh, uh, information that the watch can gather through movement to have 100% accuracy without AI. Great. Um, let's see. OK, so then vitals monitoring. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so this is almost a second layer too to falls because we've realized that anything that happens, whether it's a stroke, a heart attack, a fall, there will be a change in heart rate, right? Uh, any emergency. So what we what we do is we really look at what is what is mom's typical heart rate range, and then we're going to set those parameters. So when you go in and set up your account, uh, one of the things you're going to put in is what what's mom's high heart rate, what's mom's low heart rate. And then anytime her heart rate goes beyond 
uh, those parameters, there's going to be an alert. So I always tell people, if you look and you see a, a heart alert, that could very well be a fall. And maybe the fall uh, uh, detector didn't detect it. So um, it's good second layer. And it's also uh, 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 going to alert us if there are any other potential issues. Like I say, stroke, heart attack, emergency. Uh, even the point of panic, maybe there's nothing wrong, but, but mom's panicking and her heart rate's up. That should be an alert. Now, um, over the last year since we've been doing these digital discussions, we've had some um, uh, different wearable technology that, you know, monitors vitals in a, in a wide variety of ways. And one of the things that's sort of become abundantly clear to me is, is that, you, you know, um, unless you are really active and interested in this data, it can be rather overwhelming. Does one of the features that I think you said that you've got a support feature that your company offers is sort of monitoring that data to let the family or the individual know if there are changes in patterns that they should be alerted on. Um, it is, is that a feature that you all provide? Uh, yes, it, relative to location and vitals. Now, uh, uh, we've also got a sensor. We, we don't have it on the site yet. We're hoping to be offering it by the end of the year where we're going to be able to also look at blood sugar and blood pressure. So um, that data we can provide to the family and the family can uh, 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 that can go to medical professionals, they can take it to their doctor. Um, but right now, today, other than movement um, and vitals, we are not uh, providing any other data. Uh, I'm sorry, and medication. Uh, so we'll have, you got, you got the, the family has adequate uh, um, uh, access to medication history, movement history, and uh, uh, vital history. Okay, great. Um, and let's see, question came in. If somebody already had this Samsung watch, is there a way for them to um, package your software on it? Or is that, um, uh, have you sort of packaged this specifically with the hardware on the Samsung? Uh, so we are, as of this moment, uh, that is not available on the site. We're probably looking at September where yes, you're gonna be able to, to purchase using your own watch, you're gonna to have to put in, it, it does, the, the challenge, it does take a little bit of, uh, of knowledge uh, from the, the, the user. What is their IMEI number and do they have an eSIM? So it has to be active to or above, has to be eSIM, and then they've gotta know their IMEI number because you gotta put that into the system and then that's how we're gonna to connect to it. We're gonna send a deep link, which will allow them to have the app on the watch. Great. And um, let's see, uh, Ruth asks, does it count steps? Will I be able to ditch my Fitbit in favor of the does it all watch? <laughs> uh, so yes, the, the watch itself, the native features on the watch, one of them is counting steps. And yes, it does. Now, uh, depending on mom or dad, my dad, for example, um, with his watch, I, I, I partitioned it to only have the assistance now uh, uh, software on it because it can get confusing and they are they are small screens so you don't want too much going on for mom you want to keep it simple large icons if, if you can provide too much of the native uh, features and get them into using the steps and things like that it can get confusing so I think it just depends on mom or dad and and you make that decision great and then um, someone asks is there a fees is there a fee for the after hour? medical support um, and, and, and also they ask, could these be purchased in bulk? Like for, let's say a home care agency purchases 10 of these and then passes them along to their clients. Absolutely, so we, we, uh, the, the agency or, or corporate purchase, they would just reach out to us directly. Uh, they can call the number on the, on the website, ask for me and uh, I can handle that. Um, the, I'm sorry, the other question? Uh, after the after hours. Oh, after hours, yes. Yeah. So we are, so if, if, if they select the professional monitoring, that is 24 hour support. 
Now, you'll notice on the site, there's an option for doctor on call. And that is simply because uh, a lot of people want access to a doctor other than the hours their doctor is available. So the professional monitoring uh, uh, that, that is 24 seven, that isn't medical advice, but that is, that is somebody who is gonna monitor and seek medical advice if need be. If medical advice is what you want uh, after hours, then you would uh, click on the doctor on call uh, option. Okay, great. Um, good questions, guys. Or come keep on them. screen to talk to you and give you medical advice. Yep. Um, keep keep the questions coming here. Um, the um, and let me kind of get back to the list that we were working on. Okay, cellular communication. Your watch is your cell phone. Um, so I, I've got an Apple Watch and I know how this feature works, but uh, tell us a little bit about how it works on your... Um... Yeah, so the we, we looked a lot at, God, should we do Bluetooth? Should we do something that just works inside the home? And we are going to be uh, coming out with a, a Bluetooth just an inside the home or on the property uh, a product. But right now, what we like about LTE or cellular is it is everywhere, everywhere that there's coverage, right? So if mom's on a walk or mom's at the store or wherever mom is, she's going to have coverage, you're going to have connectivity. And what I've realized is a lot of people, and I always tell families, this is an emergency device, don't burn up all the minutes <laughs> chit-chatting, right? But they like the fact that they can just reach mom right on her wrist and mom can just push a button and, 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 and talk to whoever uh, very quickly. So yes, it is a cell phone. I remind people of that, that it is a two-way communication cell phone device and it does not need uh to be paired with a smartphone phone. okay um and um craig uh craig clark and i, I want to big, give a big shout out to craig clark i haven't seen him in person in a long time but i know him uh says in addition to selecting first responders how is this better than the apple watch six um and it sounds it sounds like you did a little bit of research between using samsung and apple and i'm wondering have you explored offering this with, with both devices? Yeah, so I, I love Apple products, I have them. The reason that we did not choose Apple is it requires pairing and a smartphone. And many, many of our older adults just aren't there. They're not there, either they don't have one or they don't wanna be tasked with having to pair it. Um, Samsung is ahead of Apple there. Um, it does not need to be paired. It's a standalone device. So it is easier. That's why we chose uh, um, a Samsung. Now, that's a good question. Well, if, if this thing will detect falls, well, then what do we need you for? So just fall detection is, is, a, is a small part of this thing, right? Uh, as I mentioned, you've got to learn from uh, uh, behaviors and, and better predict falls because the, the, the stock uh, a fall detection that's on these watches just is not enough. And then you've got a triage, right? You can't just have it go to 911. Um, or is it going to go to uh, 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 one person over and over? And then what about vitals? How do you, how do you take that vital data and, and measure it and deliver it in such a way that it, it could be an alert? That, like I said, alone could be a fall or a stroke. And then uh, uh, the reminders the, whether it's medications or, or physical therapy or whatever that is, all that is layered on um, to what these devices can do on their own. And that's why, quite frankly, Apple and Samsung are very openly working with uh, health companies and, and, and uh, the health industry right now because they know that these additional features and this additional functionality is much needed. Now, um... I had, I, I went to the Consumer Electronics Show, I think it was like over 10 years ago. And there was, I, I, I've been dying to look this guy's name up because I quote him all the time. He was he's viewed as the granddaddy of telemedicine. And one of the things that he sort of shared with the audience is, is that in the future, which we're now in, that we're going to have wearable devices that are going to collect our medical data over a period of time. And now when we go to our doctor, 
for our annual physical, instead of that doctor just looking at us for that five minute period and throwing the stethoscope on our chest, he, the doctor maybe a week before our appointment is looking at all of this data. And when we come in, it's sort of like, hey, what was going on in your, in your life in April? Your heart rate is, was higher, or, you know, what have you. Um, does this device in your dashboard, could it sort of serve as a, that functionality for medical providers and other folks in terms of showing the, the wearer's health over a, a certain period of time? Absolutely. So our, our, really this phase is to uh, ship the product, get the, the core features um, uh, out there and, and, and get people using them and get comfortable with them. Really the second kind of phase of, of this uh, a company is to, to have that data collected and, and uh, being able to be used in such a way that the user could uh, uh, provide it to their doctor. I mean, you're right, uh, uh, the, the, the doctor's visit of the future is data is delivered to the doctor, doctor's on a screen, doctor's got everything. They've got your heart rate, blood pressure, everything going back six months and they can better uh, accurately diagnose issues. So yes, the data, the, the, how that data is collected, uh, dissected and delivered is super important and we are very much working on uh, uh, that aspect of, of our business. Great. Now, I was really, I was waiting for this, but finally, somebody asked uh, about pricing and costs and things of that nature. Um, can you walk us through that? And would it be helpful if I clicked on one of these tabs like the shop screen? Yeah, yeah. Let's go to shop really okay. quick and I'll show you how the pricing works. Okay. I'll put my glasses on here because that's kind of small text. Well, let me see if I can bump it up a little bit more here. Oh, that's okay. Well, if it, yeah, if you want to, but it's I got okay. my glasses on now. So. Okay. All right. Okay, so, so you're gonna you're gonna select the watch, uh, right there in the middle. Select and continue. Okay. Now, uh, uh, scroll down a little bit. So, if for family monitoring, nineteen ninety nine, uh, you'll see monitoring options there. Um, Oh wait, hold on. Okay, so monitoring. Options. So right now, this this it, it, it auto selects professional monitoring. Okay, that's twenty nine ninety nine. Okay, so now, well, first off, the nineteen, the twenty nine ninety nine. That's a monthly fee. Correct. Okay, but yeah, then, so nineteen ninety nine. If um, uh, you want to self monitor, utilizing the app and the and the uh, uh, the mobile app and the okay. web app. Uh, 2099 is the professional monitoring, and that okay. is per month. And then it says sale includes a one time charge of 299. So that, yeah, that's for the watch, is, that's for the device. So 299, right. and then the monitoring is either 2999, that's the 24 7 professional monitoring. Um, and and then 1999 per month would be. If like the family is going to do the model. Correct. Correct. Okay. So then, um, okay. So then it looks like care visits. That's yeah. That so a, that's if you want that. We I was talking about the care visits to the, uh, where you could have a caregiver actually come to the home. Um, now, uh, over half of, of of users that are that are going to be buying a wearable probably aren't going to opt for this right. initially. But once you are at the point where you might need uh, this type of device, it isn't long before you might need somebody, like I said, to come and, and, and go grab groceries. Maybe it's pick up medications. Uh, okay. Maybe it's a, a project. Uh, so yes, we are offering care well, visits. That's where, yeah, as you mentioned, the home care partners come in. Yeah, and, and what I can see here with just the questions that we have on these discussions, the thing, the the people that I talk to on a daily basis, it's those families where mom or dad might be resistant to having assistance. You know that it's there's this this window of time where where like a lot of families say, okay, we think that mom needs some help. You know, we've we've done a few different things, but Hey, let's get her this this device. It can help us feel safer. It can help mom feel safer. Doesn't have the stigma of aging attached to it. And 
Now you've got that on a wrist, and then this is an easy uh, feature to add on three months, three years down the road um, where you might be able to get that assistance. That's okay. it, Steve. It's that, it's that connection to a caregiver. I don't have to commit. I don't have to have somebody come into my house every day, but I can push a button and I can get one. That's an easy step or transition. Absolutely. Okay. So, and then the doctor on call is probably the same type of thing. Doctor on call. Yeah. We mentioned, uh, you had asked, well, what if we want medical advice? And, and, you know, the whole reason I brought doctor on call was that same question by a lot of families. Well, gosh, you know, we might want medical advice and our doctor is probably not going to be answering the phone. So we, we actually, uh, hooked up with a great group. This is a doctor. This is not a, uh, you know, a, a, a PA or, or an assistant. This is actually a doctor that will come on and talk to mom or dad about their particular issue at that time. Okay, great. Um, and okay. that, like I said, you can opt. It, it, it will okay. default to, to no, but. Yeah, good. I, I think that, uh, I, I think we walked through the cost. So I think that answers, hopefully answers some of those questions that came in on the cost. Um, once the device is purchased, there is a monthly monitoring fee. Yes. So the, um, that's, um, you purchase the device and then you either have the 1990, the 19 or, the Nine or 29. 29. And remember that isn't just the monitoring. That's also the data and voice. It's, it's basically, it is a cell phone. So it's like paying for your iPhone. There is a monthly charge for the wireless. Got it. And then, um, let's see. Uh, somebody says, granddaddy of telemedicine, yes, pain can cause blood pressure to go up and blood pressure and other vital tests are one moment in time, may need to consider a holistic picture with cumulative information. Um, yeah, I, I want to track that guy down. I, I, I uh, um, it's amazing. I mean, he really had a crystal ball in the future. He also did say, like at the time that he was speaking, the Fitbits were just being introduced. And he basically said that, you know, right now you're looking at these products, these health products, those are going to be the medical products of the future. And um, uh, he, was, he was definitely a brilliant guy. Um, let's see, Craig asks, does Medicare or other insurance cover the purchase or monthly fees? Uh, it does not. However, um, there are insurance companies, and I'll be providing more information on this as I get it, that are providing uh, 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 discounts um, based on wearing a, uh, a safety device such as this. That, you know, talk about a great way to spend our public um, money would be something like anything that sort of monitors safety and falls um, would, uh, I think, save us all, you know, billions of dollars and, oh, yeah. and, and lives as well, you, you know, Absolutely. so the, the benefit of, of having some sort of um, compensation in this area would be, would be greatly appreciated. There's definitely a, a, a big return on investment when you when you prevent falls, absolutely, Steve. Great. Okay, so we talked about the high quality uh, watch. I think, yeah, I think it was a great move, sort of going with an existing product and then retrofitting it versus trying to build this on your own. Um, right. Professional caregivers. The I mean, who can beat Samsung and Apple, right? Yep. Exactly. Um, but they're not. You know, they're they're almost too big too. They're not interested in really developing out specialization for this field. So it really is a perfect um, yeah. match for us. This is great. This is great. Well, I feel like we walked through all elements of this product. And I think that the, uh, I, I want to thank everybody for the great questions and helping us uh, go through this discussion. I, this is where I always say, I've got through all the questions that you guys have posed out there. And sometimes uh, five more questions pop up on my screen. But um, while I'm waiting to see if that happens, Nick, any other sort of closing thoughts or things that you'd like to share? I, I did share your email. I shared your your the link to the website. 
Um, anything else that you'd like to, to share with our audience? No, I think uh, I think you covered it all, Steve. Just remember that it is um, you 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 can cancel at any time if you do purchase this and keep the watch just as a watch. Um, oh, that's great. Uh, that's yeah. I'm glad you added that on. So that let's let's assume that somebody you know purchased this watch. It's which is a totally functional Samsung watch. Yeah. And you use this for a year or so, and then you're not using it anymore. The watch yeah, I'll give you an example. We have a, a client that, you know, mom moved into uh, a 24 hour memory care and uh, her daughter just kept the watch. We, they canceled service and she kept it as her as a smart watch for herself. Not only that, but it's also this, this wonderful thing to remember your, your, you know, your mom by it's uh, right. You know, right. um, let's see. Uh, we've got our friend Gene Pool. Um, <laughs> I love it. Uh, we've got regulars at our discussions here, and he asks, "I assume that you side load your app. So, what happens when and if the Samsung opt uh, updates to the operating system or on the watch?" Yeah, I, I. Good question, Gene. I get I get those from time to time on my um, my Apple Watch. Yeah, so everything is done remotely. The, the user doesn't have to do anything other than accept a, a pop-up on the screen will come up, do you accept the update and they push yes. Uh, the, this is eSIM. So the, the uh, app is loaded through a deep link. It's all wirelessly, everything's wireless. We used to use actual SIMs, things were much easier then, but nowadays just because of the, the, uh, the architecture and the real estate available on these these boards, they're just, they had to do away with the actual hard sound. And um, Craig asks, is, is it waterproof? Can it be worn in the shower? Yes, absolutely. That was a must. And, and we've seen that about now the, the data, the national data, if you look at is, is much higher, but in, in our uh, um, study, it was 35% of falls were happening near the shower. Not necessarily in the shower, but near it. So it could be getting out uh, on the way in, in the bathroom near the shower. So it was really important to us to have a waterproof device. And yes, this can be worn in the shower. And, and how does the uh, battery tech work um, on the Apple Watch? I have a little docking station that I have to put my watch in. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm going to try and show this to you, but I... Uh... Here, this let me is plugged into my computer. Here. It's just a magnetic tray. Mm -hmm. The watch sits on it like that and charges. Okay. No connection okay. that has to be done. And now I have a senior friendly uh, magnetic band on here. We have both magnetic and Velcro okay. um, because the typical bands on these Samsung watches are the clasp and buckle, which can be hard for some seniors. Okay, gotcha. So, but yeah, it's just a tray. It's the same thing as they, that uh, Apple's using, I believe. Okay. Um, and then uh, Gene had a follow-up question to his previous question um, with the updates. And he says, but would an update affect your app? So like, um, it I does guess, not. Okay, okay. So you're, yeah. So I guess the good thing you're is, is we, we have a working relationship with Samsung and we have uh, uh, partner software, if you will, so that our app is always uh, being updated ahead of any releases that, uh, that could affect it. Okay, great. Um, and do you know what the, um, uh, like what is, how, how long could somebody wear that watch without charging? Like what So the, the minimum for us in testing was 24 hours. So uh, it's at least 24 hours. Now, the reason that changes a lot is if, if mom's really active, she gets more alerts, um, or maybe she has more medications that are being taken, or maybe she, she's making calls from the watch, that, that affects the battery life. So um, we've seen as much as over 48 hours, and we've seen 24 hours. So 24 hours is what we say, um, we'll definitely get, but it's probably going to be more. Okay. Now, could uh, is there an alert when that battery is run down so that, like, um, yes, 
So there's an alert on the watch, and then we also built an alert into the app. So if you, uh, 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 as son or daughter, want to know when mom's battery is low, um, you'll get a, an alert on your phone that's telling you mom's battery is running out. Okay, so then somebody could either come by or call or what have you, that's right. good. And then Gene asks, about how long does it take to recharge to 80%? I've been actually blown away at how quickly this watch can recharge. Um, yeah, yeah, two hours and you're full. You can all the way to empty to full in two hours. Yeah. And, you know, and that's, you know, I, I always say, you know, have mom charge at a specific time. So for example, mom sits down and watches a television show every day at four o'clock. Maybe that's the time she charges right there next door, hour long show puts it back on and then good to go for another 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah. I've, a few times I've, you know, not taken it. I charge mine in, at night and then a few times I forgot and I threw it on the charger and literally, you know, I got out of the shower and I went from like zero to like 60% in that short period of time. So um, yeah, the technology is amazing. It's it, 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 we're getting there quickly. So um, an hour is plenty of time to keep this watch charged on a, on a go forward basis. Yeah. And, and I guess because you're updating it, um, those updates are automatically loaded into the watch. Um, yep. And again, probably just like my Apple watch, these are products that you can hold on for three or four years that it's always compatible, you, you know? Absolutely. So. Yeah, there's no end of life per se for uh, uh, the, 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 the app or the watch. It will work as long as, you know, mom or dad want to use it. Great. All right. Well, like I said, I, I think it was about 10 minutes ago that I said uh, I didn't have any more questions and you guys uh, delivered. So, Nick, this has been an amazing discussion. Stay in touch with us. I'll check in with you from time to time. And uh, uh, let's see, one more question, of course. What carrier does your eSIM connect with? We got other, we got some other technophiles in the audience here. Um, sure. Okay, so it is Verizon now. However, um, we have a couple of options that we're working on that can uh, bounce between the two. And that is simply because you may want, uh, 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 AT&T might have better coverage in one area than Verizon. T-Mobile might have better coverage in one area than Verizon. So the, the platform that we're using right now uh, uh, is of course Verizon, but uh, very shortly um, it will be able to work on all networks. Okay, great. Um, all right, well, um, again, thanks a lot. Let's stay in touch, especially as you um, roll out new updates, just check in with us and I'll make sure that our community knows. And, and if they're really big updates, then we'll have you, uh, you guys we'll come on board. Oh, here's and another Steve, one. I'll keep you abreast on shipping product too, as you probably have heard, uh, partly because of the pandemic, there's just, uh, uh, in the electronics business, there's a, a product shortage everywhere and it is affecting our supply. And I do apologize for people that go on and want to order one and get it now. Um, but hopefully we're going to be through this, uh, Samsung tells us, by uh, uh, September. Not that we'll be able to ship, of course, before that, but we won't necessarily have shortage issues or lean uh, supply an, issues. Another good question from Craig is, what is the monthly Verizon fee to make the phone calls? So is that included in that $19 oh, yeah. per month? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because that's something I forgot to mention. So your monthly a fee, the 19 or 29, that covers your calls and data. That covers everything. Um, now, it, it, if, if you go beyond, so we, we, we an average user with, with lots of testing, and that's, that's about a call every other day, um, that's an average amount of, of, uh, of data going back and forth for, for medications and things like that. It's under 100 meg. Um, if you go over 100 meg, there is uh, um, the additional per minute charges. They're not a ton. The most I've ever seen anybody go is an extra $5 for that month. Okay. And that's on the phone a lot. <laughs> Rather than get up and go get their cell phone, they just, you know, uh, uh, talked on their watch. Um, 
So yeah, the, the monthly fee does include voice and data and uh, you shouldn't go over that as long as you're not using it as your primary communication device. Okay, but you could see there might be a situation where mom doesn't have a cell phone, the family buys this for her, she figures out how she can make these calls and you know she's just chatting away, but the, yeah, so I did have a family ask me, they said, hey, look, we want, we want to use this for, uh, for the grandkids and everybody to call mom on. And we did set her up with a different plan that incorporated, um, in her case, it was about 70 minutes, I think it was. Um, so we can do that. We can customize the plans. We're, okay. a, we're a small enough company to where you can call us and we can work out uh, uh, things with with uh, users okay. based on their particular situation. And, and then one more time, just to explain the, the, the data again, somebody missed that. Like how much you get with the, the monthly fee? Oh, 100 megs. 100 megs, okay, all right. Um, okay, well, um, thanks again. I've been trying to say goodbye here for uh, the <laughs> third time. And uh, so, uh, we'll, we'll be in touch and uh, great job on developing an innovative product and uh, really eager to hear from any of our, used, our audience that uh, tries it out. You got it, Steve. I appreciate your time. It's been great Thank having you. being on your show. Okay, bye.